What is desire? How does desire control your life? And why does it occur? Let us inquire together. Infinite love, beautiful people. Welcome back to our new video. For today, inquiry, we will go about what desire is. We have all heard about desire. We have also heard that we have to control it, suppress it and overcome it to reach some kind of enlightenment. Is that all true? Does that have any truth with reality? Let us now dive deep together. So to dive deep, we have to be open-minded. We have to be ready to inquire, to ask, to not to accept and not to discard, but to actually observe and see if there's a truth in it. So when we start with the desire, we all know what desire is. Desire is, I want that. Give me that. It can be a thing. It can be a person. It can be company. It can be many subtle forms. It can just be going outside or staying in a home, playing video games. It can also be desire to work. So you overwork yourself, overtrain yourself. Everything can be the desire. So how does this desire come into a being? To find out, as always, we have to observe how our brain function. How and why do we think? As you may know, you can also check this in video, we all have the same brain. And this same brain collects information through the time and stores it inside. So when we observe something very interesting, this brain records it. All of these recordings are becoming the person you are. So all of your experiences, the food that you eat, the, the exercise that you do or not do, fun that you have or not have, everything, everything together forms a person. And this person is center. It is an ego. So you are the ego, you are the person. There is no way to destroy your ego. You are your ego, it is part of you. So instead of trying to escape from it or fight it, you have to accept it, you have to be able to observe it. So giving attention, you can do that right now. You can see yourself, you can see the feeling I am. So you are this, everything that is collected. So how does this function, this center? The most of the time we are always thinking. Our brain is constantly active, always bringing the back old memory, collecting new information and turning that around and planning what will happen tomorrow. So it is never here, never now, never present. It is always in the past or thinking about the future. So all of this is giving a strain on your brain. Your brain becomes tired from thinking all the time. You surely remember when you had to study so much that at the end of the day you were so tired because you have strained your brain. Same thing is with constantly thinking. Over the time your neurons lose the strength and you become weak. This is not something that I invented. It is medically and scientifically shown that constantly thinking wears out your brain. So, being all the time in this ego personality, the moment when you see something enormously beautiful, the thinking stops. Because you give attention. When you give total attention, when you listen, when, when you observe, when you feel with all of your senses, the brain stops thinking because it is attentive. It is alive in this moment. The moment when you are thinking all the time, we are not talking about really thinking that it's needed, let's say for example for the science, but thinking about our problems, what to do all the time, what not to do, and all of these things wear out our brain. So the moment you see something beautiful, 
a beautiful woman or a beautiful man or a beautiful mountain or a beautiful sunset or a beautiful thing, beautiful car. Your brain gives total attention and for a moment it is completely quiet. Let's say, for example, you saw a beautiful, beautiful woman or a man and you have given total attention to them in this moment and for a brief second you have escaped from your ego, from, your, from the grasp of the center. The moment you've done that, this beauty that you saw, when you come back to the ego, ego has seen that as a pleasure because the joy after it comes in the past becomes pleasure. So this pleasure the brain wants to do it again because brain is mechanical. It is doing all over the things that has done in past in order to have a pleasure that it had before. So let's slow down the process. The moment you observe the beauty envelops your brain and you give attention. You only see the beauty. There is no the center. There is no the one who is seeing this beautiful woman or a man. It is only observation and you feel joyful, you feel happy, you feel tremendous happiness inside you just because you have been freed from your center. It is not the beauty of the person that you want, but you want the feeling inside you. You want to be free from the center. So you pursue that. The moment the thought arises, as we have slowed this, what a beautiful woman or a man, you have stopped observing. You are not in the joy anymore. Now you are again in a process of the brain and it wants the repetition. So the next thought comes, would it be nice if that was a my girl or my man? And then you pursue the desire. The same thing happens for everything. You can go and observe every desire that you have separately or you can give attention and observe the whole system in one and that is understanding why the desire is there. So when you observe the whole desire, you will see that it is the same process for seeing a beautiful car, so seeing a beautiful piece of cloth, seeing a beautiful house. Everything that you desire and pursue has the same process. Also, finding a better job. Not saying that you shouldn't do these things, you should only do what is needed when it's needed, not because you want it or don't want it. So now we come to the thing that is most important in this video. And that is, is it possible to live without desire? Because many of us would say, what is the life without desire? Desire pushed me in some direction. But that is a mechanical push. But what if? If you see this process of desire, if you give total attention to this desire as it arises, you are aware of the beauty, you are the, aware of the thought, and you are aware that the for, desire is forming. What if you give total attention to the forming of this desire and observe what will happen? Then you will have something completely different. You would be free whether you want to pursue the desire or not. So difference is, before you had to pursue desire or you should escape from desire. No, I'm already married. No, I don't want it. But still you want to look because every part of you pulls there and you want to pursue this. But when you completely give attention, when you melt away the desire, you are free from the desire. So there is no overcoming desire. There is no fighting desire. There is no escaping from desire. There is total attention. When there is listening, when there is total attention, you are completely here. And there is no beginning, there is no end. There is only observation. 
From this observation, as you develop the skill of observation, you will see what is needed to do and when it's needed to do. Not what you want to do or don't want to do. Try this for yourself. Observe your life. Observe when you are walking and seeing something beautiful. Observe yourself in this relationship because everything is relationship in our world. You are related to everything because you are part of this world. So observe yourself and in this observation, in relationship with other human beings or other things, you will find out and see yourself. Thank you for inquiring with me and until next video, infinite love.